songwriter said, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. I want you to give God a no, never praise right now. A, a no, never. I'll never forget. Oh, give them, I'll never forget. I'll never forget. Come on, give them, I'll, I'll never forget. I'll never forget. I'll never forget how you preserve my life, how you saved me, how you redeemed me, how you showed mercy when I didn't deserve it. Jesus, I'll never forget. Come on, let's give them all never forget praise. I'll never forget. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clap our hands up to the Lord. Clap our hands. Come on, let's clap our hands to the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. God been good to somebody in here tonight. God been good to some folks in here. And this is why we praise him. This is why we honor him. Hallelujah. It's been a while since we've been here. And uh, we've been we've been out. We've been soul winning and spreading the gospel and take some time and give back to the house of the Lord and it's good to see you all tonight it's good, it's good to be here it's good to be here hallelujah how many appreciate the presence of the Lord the presence of the Lord I told you on Sunday, sometimes you have to go into extended praise and worship so that we can truly get what we need from the Lord. It, it really opens us up, opens up our spiritual pores, amen, so that we can receive all that God has for us. And so we don't miss, miss these moments, these, these moments of intimacy. We are building intimacy as we are worshiping the Lord. Amen. And so uh, we don't take these moments lightly. We don't take them for granted. And so we are grateful uh, tonight uh, to be back here. And so I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. I'm going to jump right in uh, in this. Um, we've been in for, for months, even before we went out this summer, um, just dealing with um, Christ Revealed. Everybody say Christ revealed. Christ All right. We, we don't want to just know of him. We want to know him. All right. We want to know him in a personal and intimate way. All right. We want to know Christ. Hallelujah. It's not, it's not good enough to just know who Jesus is. Right. Well, somebody like, whoa, pastor, what are you saying? Um. I need you to go to 2 Corinthians 5, really fast. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 16. Somebody read that out loud. 2 Corinthians 5 and 16. Second 
Corinthians 5 and 16. Somebody read that out loud. What is that? We're for him for no we no man after the flesh. Go ahead. Though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Somebody read verse 17. Go ahead. You can read. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All right? And so when I said it's not good enough just to know Jesus, the person of Jesus, yes, we want to know him, his character, his personality. We desire to be like, like Jesus, right? And so we read about Jesus and his, his character and how he loved people and how he treated people. Amen. But the Bible didn't intend for us to stop there. The Bible intends for us to get a hold of Christ, right? Uh, to, to develop a, a deeper intimacy with Christ Jesus. Now we know mo no man after the flesh, right? Now we henceforth know we him no more, right? Jesus, the person, went to the cross, Calvary's cross, died on the cross um, for, for the sins of humanity. Amen. But he went to that cross so that he can pour out his spirit. Luke 24, verse 49, the Bible says he told them to go tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power. Everybody say endued. Endued. That is clothed upon. That is literally wrapped in like you put on your clothes today. Amen. He wanted us to be clothed in um, the power. Hallelujah. From on high. That is Christ. He wanted us to put, put on Christ. Amen. And so we need Christ to be revealed to us. Amen. So that we can actually live like Jesus. And so we don't just talk about it. Right? We don't just have conversations about, man, Jesus was a great person. This is how he lived and this is how he loved. Man, uh, can't nobody be like Jesus. Well, he told us to be like him. All right? He, he called us to be like him. In order to be like him, we have to get in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a what? He is a new creature. Amen. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And so as the more we come into Christ, the more we uh, become like him. And so this, this is what we teach. This is what the Bible teaches. And so uh, we spend our lives growing in our knowledge and understanding of who Christ is. I told you all, Christ is not Jesus' last name. All right? What's his name? Jesus Christ. No, it's Jesus. All right? Christ, amen, is what we are, are evolving into becoming. Are right? becoming Christ-like, amen, so that we can be in the image of Jesus, right? It's through the Spirit, Christ, the anointing. Amen. And so we want to continue to have Christ revealed to us. And so we're going we're to stay in this, uh, right, our spiritual intelligence. We want to grow. We have to grow. Amen. And so, uh, praise the Lord. We bless you. Bless the Lord for you all tonight. If you have your hands out, um, we, we're going to jump. We're going to go into this. Now, there was, um, y'all know Sunday, Sunday was a little different, right? A little, a little different, but... Look, I'm telling y'all, we're going we're gonna to expect, let's just expect, amen, um, we, we coming, we coming for the adversary, we coming, everything he coming for, we coming at him, all right, amen, and so uh, God called us to be free, and we're going to be free, all right, God called us to be more than overcomers, we're going to be more than overcomers, right, we want to be all that Christ called us to be. All right, and so we're not taking a back seat to the adversary in no areas of our lives, all right? And so let's make up our mind. I'm not taking a back seat to the devil in nothing, all right? I'm not giving you any room for nothing. The Bible says don't give foot to the enemy, right? Don't even give him a foothold. Don't give the enemy a foothold. Don't let him have anything, all right? Any room, any space, all right? No mercy. You know, if you ever play mercy with somebody, 
right? And then and, and they and they get to twisting up and you plan to twisting their arm up, right? And, and, and somebody yell mercy and you let off the you let your foot off the gas, right? You let them off the hook. We, y'all, we ain't giving the devil no no mercy. Everybody shout no mercy. No mercy, all right? No, we're not. That's what he wants. That's what we talked about on Sunday when you coddle the devil, when you start giving him mercy, all right, and you start letting him, just let him have his corner. You stay over there, I, you stay over in that area of my life, and I'm over here. No, he's still in your life, all right? And so uh, we're not coddling the devil, all right? There's a um, documentary or movie that's been out. Um, it's all kinds of comments, thousands of comments, right, on social media. Uh, going back and forth, whether you should watch this particular documentary or not. Um, arguments of why you should look at it or why it doesn't matter. Then there's strong arguments of why you shouldn't watch it and, and, and how it's going to um, mess with you and, 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 and mess with your spirit. And uh, you're going to open up portals and doors and all this kind of, all this kind of stuff, right? Let me tell you, we got a lot more to to be concerned with than some documentaries, right? Um, there's a lot of doors and portals that are being opened up in our lives and, and, and nobody, and some of us ain't, haven't even seen that movie. Haven't even seen that, right? Got, got more portals that's opened up in our spirit life, right? Than that movie will ever open up. And so, and so we need to uh, grow in our understanding so that we can close the doors in our own personal lives. Amen. So we don't become that movie, all right? So that we don't, uh, you know, allow the adversary to make a sport of us. And, we, and, we're, and we're, we're, we're living a movie in front of everybody. Some of us is living a movie. I'm just talking about church folks in general, living a movie. The devil running sports, all right? Because we're allowing him too much room. We're allowing him too much space. Romans um, 13 believe. Look at Romans 13, verse 17. Somebody read it. Or 14, I believe. Let me see. 14, I'm sorry. There is no 17. <laughs> Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Now, this is the word of God, right? And if we're as Christ is going to be revealed, we got, again, we have to put him on, right, and we have to stop making provisions, right? What is that word provision? What does that mean? What? Huh? Making ways what? Excuses? Romans 13, verse 14. Yeah, all right. The Bible says, make not provision. Make not provision for the flesh, all right, to, to satisfy this lust. There is lust in us, right? Um, we are all, right, God doesn't tempt us with evil, right? Neither is he tempted with evil, the Bible declares. But we are all tempted when we are drawn away of what? Our own lust, right? Our own lust, the very thing. The, the, the little portals and doors that we allow to stay open in our lives. All right, Holy Ghost, all right, <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, we're tempted when we're drawn away of our own lust, those open doors that, that, that want to please the flesh, that wants to comfort the flesh, right? Every time we want to coddle the adversary, the devil, in, in different areas of our lives, right? Now those things, are, that's what leads us into temptation. Right? And so we understand how the scripture declares. And so um, when we draw away of our own lust and then, and then that lust that turns into that temptation, we yield to temptation. Temptation isn't a sin, per se, right? But, but when we keep tinkling with it and we keep flirting with it and, and we allow ourselves to, uh, to yield to temptation, temptation is going to birth sin, right? And, and when sin is complete, it's going to bring about what? Death, all right? It's going to bring a separation. It's going to bring, all right? It's going to bring discord. It's going to bring a disconnection to our relationship with God. 
And so we have to be mindful of this. And so as we are talking tonight and teaching tonight, I want us to look, look at um, our theme scripture in Hebrews 4 and 11. We have to get a hold of this. All right, we have to get a hold of this. Um, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11. The Bible says, let us labor, therefore, uh, to enter into that rest. Everybody say, that rest. That rest. that rest. that rest, right? Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. All right? So let us labor, therefore, in to enter into that rest. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Hebrews 4 is a very good chapter to just read and to, you know, uh, meditate on anyway. All right, and so as we're talking tonight, um, I want us to look at our key takeaway because this is going to uh, help us jump right in uh, to our conversation, our dialogue, teaching tonight. Uh, and here is um, from a book, you know, I've been reading in, and so I want to, I want us to uh, cite this. And so uh, what Eckhart said, he said, "Rest is peace, right? Shalom." Everybody say shalom. Shalom. That means peace, right? So rest is peace and prosperity, okay? Uh, peace is an all-inclusive word that encompasses prosperity, safety, health, protection, fruitfulness, and abundance. You all see that? All right, I need to look at that. Peace is an all-inclusive word that encompasses prosperity, safety, health, protection, fruitfulness, and abundance. And so when I, I saw that, it, it immediately grabbed my attention um, a lot of part of because of that documentary, uh, because uh, everyone talking about the portals and the doors that are going to be opened up, and if you're not, if you're not mature, if you're not at a spiritual state to handle something like that, you, you're going to have dark forces and spirits attacking you and coming at you, and I'm just like, man, people, uh, you got that stuff coming at us anyway, right? And, and again, haven't watched this. And so, and so I began to think about this then. And, and so, and I believe it's in my spirit, right? Whatever area of our life, and let's think about this, whatever area in our life uh, that we don't have peace in, that is an open door for the devil, all right? Every area in our life that it is not a place of peace, that is an open door, an open invitation for the devil. All right? And, and that, that's the reality. That's the reality. And this is why, amen, uh, worship, praise, all of these things that we do to get our hearts right, it's so important. It matters. We cannot, we cannot, you know, shortchange ourselves when there's an opportunity to worship the Lord because we have to break up this fallow ground. We have to get to a space, amen, where we allow our heart to be open uh, so that the Lord can come and, 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 and bring us that rest, all right? Bring us the rest that we need, okay? And so, and so that rest and that peace that we need. You got to think about this, all right? Uh, I mean, you, you think about health. Well, we're not at peace with our health, and, and we're worrying about our health, and we're stressing, right? What, what spirits is, is coming in? Because we're not at peace. This is why we got to take care of our body. Somebody said fear, right? All right? And so now you got, you got fear, and the Bible lets us know that fear is torment, right? And so, and so this is why we have to deal with our health, right? Because if we don't deal with our health, and we allow our health, sometimes, you know, just living naturally there are things that can happen but even then we got to get to a place of peace we got to get to a place of rest because amen that will that will open a door it will birth an opportunity for the adversary to come in and torment us right all right amen if you know uh, god called us to, to live in, in an abundance right god uh, you know uh, it gave, we, we are co-heirs with Abraham, all right? There's promises that God has for us, and when we don't have peace and, and we're not operating, we're not experiencing the abundance of what God has 
uh, call for us, what happens? We, we get, we, we start growing into discontentment, right? And we start growing into covetousness. And there's other, all these other things start opening up and start operating in us, right? And, and, so, and so, like, this stuff is serious. This stuff is serious. We got to deal with this hidden man of our heart. We got to deal with our heart. We have to deal, amen, uh, with things that, are, that we are not at peace about in our spirit. Um, when you think about fruitfulness, <laughs> right, Bible declares, Bible declares that um, to, to one he gave five talents, right? And then to another he gave three talents. And to another he gave how many? He gave one talent, right? Another part of scripture, he gave one, three, he gave two, he gave one, uh, one of them, one. And, and so when you're at peace with what God has given us and, and the talents and what God has blessed us with, amen, um, you don't fall into the trap of comparison. You don't fall into the trap of envy and jealousy. You don't fall into the trap of, again, discontentment, right? Because you are settled. All right, God, you gave me five talents. And so the one with the five talents, he, he worked his talents, and when, when it was time to have a report, he reported back that I have how many talents? Somebody talk to me. Huh? He started with five. What? All right, Bible scholars. <laughs> right, he doubled, his, he doubled his talents. All right, all right. You got it. Y'all got it. I heard some of you. Yeah. So he doubled his talents. And so what did the, what did the Lord say to him? He said, thou, thou good and what? Faithful servant. When you're good. Thou good and faithful servant. The one that had three, he was excited. All right. He didn't get stuck in comparison. Man, oh man, he got five. I only got three. No, he said, all right, I'm going to work what I got. I'm going to handle and manage what God has given me. I'm going to focus on what God has given me. I'm going to run my race. I'm not going to focus on nobody else's race because, because you find out when he doubled his talent, the Lord gave him the same reward. All right? You get the same reward. And that's what we have to understand. It doesn't matter if it looks like somebody else is doing more or they have more. At the end of the day, you're going to get the same blessed reward. Yes. And so the one with the three, he doubled his and he said, all right, thou good and faithful servant. All right. And so now we have the one. Obviously, we know how that story ends. That one got stuck in comparison. That one got stuck. And, and, and it had the devil all in his mind, had the devil all in his heart, because he would not work what God gave him. He would not walk in obedience. He would not, he would not walk in faith and trust that what God gave him uh, uh, mattered. Whatever God gives us matters. All right? All right? Don't, don't minimize what God has called you to do. Never, it doesn't matter what the assignment is. Okay, all right. What did the one scripture say? I'd rather be a, I'd rather be a, a doorkeeper. What's the scripture? Somebody call it out, huh? I'd rather be a what? I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than what? Than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Somebody looked that one up. Y'all need to write that down, right? I'd rather be a doorkeeper. They didn't say I'd rather be a bishop, I'd rather be an evangelist. I said, I'd rather, I'd rather be a doorkeeper. All right? All right. I'd rather, I, if I can stand at the door, if I can just, I can just serve in the littlest of capacity, that matters more than anything this world has to offer. Okay? And so, and so we have to have that kind of reverence for God. And, and for whatever assignment that God gives, gives us because look at somebody and say your assignment matters. And now look at somebody and say your obedience matters more. All right? Your obedience matters more. All right? Your assignment matters. Your obedience matters more. And so whatever assignment, all right, but that's not, that's not something that we just kind of, 
well, let me, let me figure out in my mind if I want to do this or not. No, if God gives us something to do, let's do it with all of our heart. All right? Let's do it with all of our heart. And even if people forget to say thank you. All right? Because sometimes we may forget to say thank you. Sometimes we may not appreciate or value the work that each other has done. But the Bible lets us know, God lets us know that the Lord will not forget your labor of love. Yeah. He won't forget your labor of love. And if we, if we take that to heart, now whatever we do, we're doing it unto the Lord and not unto man. Colossians lets us know, right? And so this is why we serve. We're doing it unto the Lord. God sees it. God sees it. And so don't weary in well-doing, right? The Bible says, for in due season, everybody say due season, right? In due season, you're going to reap, the Bible declares, if you faint not, all right? So don't faint when nobody says thank you. Don't faint when there's no help. Don't faint, right, when, it, when, you, when you don't, you're not, you know, getting any accolades or rewards. Come on, God, is, he knows how to, he knows how to put you on front street. God know how to raise you up. God know how to bless you. God knows how to prepare a table, all right, before you in the presence of who? In the presence of your enemies, right? So he know how to prepare. He prepares a table in the presence of your hey, your enemies. Got to watch you eat, all right. But don't. But you when you do it unto the Lord, come on. God will make your enemies watch you be blessed. All right, don't do it for don't do it for worldly accolades. Don't do it for church accolades. You do it for the Lord. I don't care what the haters feel. People spend too much time talking about haters. Don't worry about haters. Y'all hating on me. They keep talking. Man, who cares? All right, who cares? God will make you eat. God will make you. He will elevate you in the midst of every hater. And they had to just see you eat, see you win. All right. All right, all right. So I don't know how we got there, but I want us to stay, stay, everybody say stay focused. Stay focused, stay focused all right? So let's stay focused. And so, and so uh, what we need to get into tonight, I want to make sure, we have to understand, first of all, as we uh, jumping into these points, these talking points, how, how important rest is to God, all right? Rest is, rest was so important to God that, I mean, you literally be killed. Okay? When you don't follow the commandments. All right? And, and, and one, of the, one of the main commandments was remember the Sabbath day. Right? Remember the Sabbath day and to do what? Keep it what? All right? Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. That was one of, amen, uh, the scriptures Hallelujah, uh, that God didn't play, he's, and he's not playing about the Sabbath day. All right, we understand in the Old Testament, when he talks about the Sabbath day, and everything in the Old Testament, we call them feet, right? Remember those, right? There's figures, examples, and samples, and patterns, and what? Symbols, right? And so all the feet, so, so they all represent something. But God wasn't playing Old Testament on the seventh day. On six, six days, they worked, they labored, they did all they did. But on the seventh day, God called them to do what? Rest, rest, all right? Everyone was supposed to rest. And of course, um, uh, they were very disobedient even then to that rest. And, and, and being disobedient and not resting on the Sabbath will cost us. It will cost us. It cost them. And so we have to learn what does that mean for us? What does that mean for us? And so, amen. I want to talk about labor from God's point of view really fast. I, I, we're not going to get through all of this, but I want us to look at this labor from God's point of view. Because, because this labor from his point of view is different uh, than what we might think. And when we think about labor, Right? We think we got to we gotta work, we got to do all these things and follow all these rules and, 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 and do all these, follow all these instructions and, and, you know, and that's how we labor. Well, in God's, in God's mind, that's not the kind of labor 
that he is talking about. Yes, it does require some work, but that's not where the focus is. Okay? And so as you look at here, this labor from God's point of view, um, you see this Greek word, everybody say, spudazo. Spudazo. All right? And so, and so, so, so for laboring in God's mind, right, gave, laboring from God's point of view, all right, it, it speaks of a diligence that we have to have, all right? It speaks of, of, of a hastiness, okay? And, and so when you think about that diligence, what, is that, what does that word diligent mean? Persistency, right? There's a, there's a persistency, right? There, there's a, a hastiness about it that means I, I, I'm in tune with this thing. I have to, I have to understand it. I, I am leaning in. It's not casual. And so when the Bible says, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, it's not a casualness. It's an alertness. It's a seriousness. And just like um, in the Old Testament, they had to, um, they, they, they were instructed to follow the Ten Commandments, the laws, right? Uh, on the seventh day, no man should work. God built everything, made everything in six days. And on the seventh day, God what? He rested from all of his labor. Everything God did, he rested. And so that was very important. And so what here, the connection is with the New Testament, hallelujah, uh, why they were trying to kill Jesus, right? Because Jesus, why are you, why are you picking corn on the Sabbath? Why are you healing folks on the Sabbath? Why are you open blinding eyes on the Sabbath? Jesus, you're breaking, you're breaking the law. Jesus trying to let them know, Bro, I am the law. Bro, I'm fulfilling this right before your eyes. I'm striving to make a connection, all right, so that you can actually live this thing because you trying to stone me for breaking the law that you ain't keeping. You a hypocrite. You a devil. You a devil. You a devil. Your father is the devil, all right? That's what he told him. He told him in John, right? He said, he said, he said you are of your father. The devil. <laughs> yeah, like Jesus was told, right? He was, right? All right. And so, and so he's striving to help us understand the kind of rest that we ought to enter into. We have to labor to enter into this rest. How do you labor? And so you look at here, right? Diligent, make haste. And then you hear, you have that word study. Oh, God. Oh, God. How many got your notebook? Oh, God. Don't raise your hand. Just bring the next time. Praise the Lord. All right? Listen. If we're going to labor to enter into this rest, we got to study. We got to get an understanding. All right? All our getting, get a what? Get an understanding. All right? How are you going to labor and enter into this rest that God has called for his people Amen. And you don't know, you don't understand this thing. I, how many of y'all, how many of y'all like to take a like to take tests? Nobody raised their hand. Nobody, right, nobody like to take tests. How many of y'all, knowing you got a big test and you don't study for it, raise your hand and you don't study. Raise your hand and you don't study. Some of y'all going to get a whooping, so I'm ignoring it like I don't see y'all hands. Look, 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 look. You don't, you don't, when you taking a test, an, an important test, when you taking an important test, you take time to study, right? Absolutely lock in. How many like making F's? Thank you. No hands raised, right? So that means you got to study. That means you got to learn some things. That means when you take a test, right, I don't see nobody in here that can just get F and your parents are going to be on your neck. All right? There ain't nobody in here. I, I'm, I'm panning the room. Nobody in here can just openly make F and your parents are not going to be on your neck. So, so that means, that means you got to spend time in study. That means you got to take some time and understand what you're doing because because no parent wants to come to a, uh, a teacher conference 
and they roll out the report card and they say F, 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 F. Right? Not retaining material, whatever they gonna say, right? Somebody in trouble. All right? And so, and, and so the same. All right? And so if we're gonna enter into this rest, we got to study, we got to understand what does that look like. Somebody read 2 Timothy 2.15 really quick, quick, quick. 2 Timothy 2.15. Y'all see it. Somebody get the other scriptures. Come on, get them, get them, get them. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Yep, workmen that need him not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing, rightly dividing the word of truth, all right? And, and, so, and so we got to study. We got to understand how to rightly divide. We have to learn how to rightly divide this thing so that we can combat, all right, the trickery and the deception of the devil. We can, we can learn how to stop opening doors in our spirit. We can learn how to stop giving the adversary a foothold into our lives. And so he, he messes us all up and causing us not to grow, all right? So we got to study. Everybody say study. study. We got to study. Quickly, somebody read 2 Peter. Quick, quick, quick. Right, we're for beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent. All right, there's that diligent. That's that word, that, that labor, that study. It's the same, it's that same word right here, right? Be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, okay? Without spot and blameless, all right? Without spot and blameless. So, so, so it's, it's very important that we spend this time. Somebody read the last one, Ephesians, Ephesians 4. Right? Endeavoring, endeavoring again, that's that diligence, all right? That's that studying, that laboring, endeavoring. No, it ain't, it ain't just showing up and having a church service. We got to learn. We got to really press in and, and be diligent about, amen, a, a unity of the spirit, right? Unity of the spirit is different than the spirit of unity. Come on, it's not the same, all right? All right, I don't want to. I don't want to be. I don't want to just have a spirit of unity because we can. We can unify on a whole bunch of stuff. All right, all right, and and it ain't God, all God, but but unity of the spirit. Okay, it, it, we're we're talking about we're talking about God here. Keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Okay, and so we got to study. We got to understand how do we do this. And so, so let's take some, let's take more time studying God's word, right? Let's take some notebooks. Let's read, let's read in our Sunday school book. Sunday school book breaks stuff down. Let's make notes in there. Let's be prepared. Amen. Because this is how we're going to combat. Devil loves ignorant things. He loves ignorant things. All right. Oh, you ignorant. You look at somebody and say, oh, they ignorant. Right. And you don't. Right, and, and so, so we don't want to fool with ignorant folks, right? Like, oh, they ignorant. The devil, he want to fool with ignorant folks. Oh, they ignorant. Oh, I'm about to get at them. They easy, right? They easy picking, right? So, so don't be ignorant. All right, look at somebody say, don't be ignorant. Right? Don't be ignorant. All right. Let's study. Let's get an understanding. All right. Let's 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 keep the devil out our business. Right? Let's keep the devil out of our business. Y'all, God has called us to win. God has called us to overcome. God has called us to be a blessing. Right? God has called us to be at peace. And so again, all right, all right, when, when we do, we're not feeling peace, we are giving the adversary this foothold. I'm going to carry and touch on this last one. All right? Uh, look, y'all, when I, when I begin to think about this, I'm like, wow, I, I changed it up so many times. I'm like, I don't know. I'm still, I just kind of put it on here because I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. But I, here's the reality. You know, why do we only talk about rest in peace when somebody dies? Huh? You never hear nobody say rest in peace, my sister. Rest in peace, my brother. 
All right? We only hear that when somebody dead, and we just like, oh, yeah, man, rest in peace. For a lot of people, it's too late. It's too late. All right? And we talking about rest in peace. Okay? So, so I, I'm trying to tell you, 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 can't, you can't stress in real life and rest in peace. It, it don't work like that. And, and so, and that's the deception. That is not what God called. How are we going to stress our whole life? We was, we was full of anxiety our whole life. We, we disobeyed God our whole life, lived in fear our whole life. And we talk about we're going to rest in peace. Well, pastor, well, that's what grace is for. No, that's deception. All right? Because, because grace, all right, we are saved by grace. All right? Okay? We ain't pampered by grace. We ain't coddled by grace. We are saved by grace. And it's through faith. And so, and so, amen. I mean, God called us to rest now. You got, you got to rest now if you're going to rest later. All right? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help us, all right? God's trying to help us. If we don't rest now, come on. You don't, we can say rest in peace all we want. You, you're not going to be resting. Your spirit ain't going to be resting in eternity. Because God is serious about his rest. Look at, look at Numbers 14, 29. Let me tell you how serious God is about his rest. Really quickly. Let me look at verse 28. Say unto them, verse 28, this is, this is Numbers 14, 28. As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me. All right? And so, and so, context of this, everyone that murmured, the children of Israel, 20 and up, 20 and up. Let's look at, um, look at John really quick, 1633. Let's look at this and get some more context to it. No, not that one. Look at look at Hebrews first. Hebrews three. Hebrews three first. Quick, 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 quick. Let's get there. Let's get there. Hebrews three. Let's look at fourteen. Bible says, "For we are made partakers of Christ." If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end. Y'all see that? Steadfast until the end. Uh, while it is said, today if you will hear my, his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, they did provoke, right? How be it not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. How be it not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, right? Uh, but with whom uh, was he grieved 40 years? Who was God grieved with for 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? We just talked about that in Numbers, right? Uh, and to whom swore he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe, uh, but to them that believe not. So see that we could not enter in because of unbelief. Y'all, God doesn't play about his rest, right? When he created us, all right, and, and we, the dispensation of grace, um, that is a requirement, just like it was a requirement for them to follow the Sabbath day and to keep it holy, not to work on the seventh day, right? Now we are in that every day, like that seventh day, he is Lord of the Sabbath. We, he requires us to enter into a rest with him. In every part of our being has to, has to come to a, a state of peace with him. And that's what we are growing into. And so every area that's not at peace with God, I know, I, I, God, I, 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 I ain't let you deal with this area of my life. I ain't let you deal with these skeletons. We need to let God deal with them skeletons.
bulletins, deal with this room, this compartment. We compartmentalize, co compartmentalize things, right? And, and we know how to do that well. All right, we try to put stuff behind and, and try not to think about it, try not to deal with it. God said, I want to deal with that part. The stuff that you try to you try to make peace that ain't really peace because if it ever gets stirred up, you fall apart. All right? And so God wants to deal with every area of our lives. He wants to deal with every area of fear, every area that torments us, every area of our lives that brings us discomfort, discomfort and, and, and we struggle with, right? The Bible says his strength is made perfect in our weakness. All right? His strength is made perfect. And so just like those that were over 20, they did not make it to the promised land. Y'all, they did not make it. Y'all, because of their unbelief, he allowed them to spin their wheels in circles until that whole generation died off. They died off and did not get into the promise. And that's why he was grieved, y'all. And so let's not grieve the Holy Spirit. All right, if we have the Holy Spirit, let's not grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost is here to bring us comfort, y'all. He's here to comfort us, to help us through our situations. Yes, we have trouble, right? We are full of troubles, right? We talk about that scripture, but even in the midst of the trouble, y'all, we are not overcome by troubles. We ought to allow the peace of God that pass all understanding, right? And so it, he is the one that's comforting us, focusing us, leading us through whatever trials or circumstances that are coming up against us. Y'all, how many believe in the power of the Holy Ghost? Come on, we got, to, we got to start operating and allowing the power of the Holy Ghost to help us, all right? We got to allow the Holy Ghost to help us, amen? Because, because the reality is, I mean, if we're, if we're not overcoming and we're not, we're not coming out of things, we're not coming into holiness, into a, a, a deeper intimate space in God, are we really saved? Are we really saved? How, people, how can people say they saved and on their way to heaven, all right, and ain't being saved from nothing? Right? Still angry all the time. All right? Bible says, Bible says, be angry and what? And sin not. All right? Why does anger, why does anger always lead us to lead some people to sin? Angry. Then you act out. Make irrational comments and statements and do things. And so the Bible says, be angry and sin not. So we got to grow up. We got to let the Holy Ghost bring us some peace in a time where anger tries to come over. Come on. Uh, the Bible speaks about, about anger in, in the bosom of someone. That's, that's a fool. Okay? You don't even want to be around people that are angry because they act out and they spaz out. And so, and so we, we have that time where we can be angry. Then the Bible says, put away your anger. Put it away. All right? We have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost helps us to put away anger. The Holy Ghost helps us to tame our tongues. We don't have to say everything we think. All right? All right? And, and we got to stop allowing everything we think to get in our heart. Come on. All right? Are we trying to grow up? All right? We're trying to grow up. We're trying to be, we want to be saved. All right? And so if we want to be saved, we need to let God save us. All right? Like I said, folks who ain't, who ain't coming in, coming out of nothing and into Christ, I mean, you got the question, am I really saved? Am I really saved? Folks be like, man, my, my relationship with God is good. You stressed out seven, six, seven days a week. Your relationship with God ain't good if you always stress. Your relationship with God ain't good if you always angry. Your, your relationship with God ain't good if you always lying. Y'all ain't talking to me tonight. Come on. All right? All right? Come on, y'all. All right? And so, and so the, the beauty of this thing is, hallelujah, amen. There is grace, that, but let's, let's be strong. The Bible says be strong in the grace of God. All right, be strong in the grace of God. And so, and so as we allow God's grace, amen, to really operate in us, right? The Bible lets us know it is God that what? Works in us. 
So let him work in us. Let this word work in us. All right? So that we can we can get a hold of ourselves, that he can get a hold of us. We can he can get a hold of our lust, our lustfulness. Y'all, come on. Lusting. The children of Israel, they lusted after everything. They lusted after everything that would please and satisfy them. When God in their minds took too long to bring an answer with Moses. Amen. They convinced Aaron, come on, Aaron, make us a God out of this golden calf. And so they made up their own God. All right, impatient demons. Oh, God. All right. Impatient demons, y'all. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on, y'all. Impatient. Come on, destructive demons. Just, ma just making irrational decisions, just doing stuff. Y'all, let me, let me tell y'all something. As your pastor, I'm, I'm going to help you out. Don't stop making decisions. On your on your feelings, all right. Let me let me help you out, all right. I'm trying to help us both, all right. Stop making emotional decisions, all right. Stop avoiding stop avoiding counsel. And I'm just saying, there's people watching online. I don't know who's watching on replay live. Look, I'm just saying, okay. Y'all y'all hear me? Okay. In a multitude of counsel, there's what? Safety. All right? And, and so let's not move off our emotions. Not, let's not allow this lust of the flesh just to be driving us all everywhere. I'm going to do this today. Well, I'm going to make this decision today. Did you ask? Did you talk to God? What did God say? All right? Well, that's just what I want to do. No, that's the devil. All right? Uh, let's, let's not do that. Y'all like, man, pastors. I'm, I'm good. I'm just trying to help us out, right? We are, we, we are helping us out, all right? Because we, we, we got to grow up. We're we growing up, all right? And so, and so we're growing to this next level, right? And so some of you now, we, we got to grow you into, in, into teachers, and so we can teach the next, le the next generation. And we got we to gotta grow, advance the level, all right? There's going to be, there's new people that are going to be coming in, that are going to be babies, and, and babies can't disciple. Now, I need levels so we can disciple babies and keep raising up, all right? So we got to grow up. We got to get a hold of this lust. We got to get a hold of our, come on, y'all. Let's let God help us, all right? Let him help us. And so, and so John 16, see, I'm about to close this out right here. John 16. Verse 33, these things have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace, right? All right. In the world you have what? In the world. See, in the world you have tribulation. If, if your world is always upside down, you, you know, if everything around you is upside down, you are in the world. All right. You are not in Christ. I'm just saying, I'm talking about, I'm talking about in a sense of if everything around, everything is bringing you all kinds of worry and nervousness and anxiousness and fear, right? Life happens. Life happens. But even as life is happening, right, if we're going to, if in the world outside of Christ, we're going to have tribulation. But in me, right, he said, be of good cheer, all right, um, I've overcome the world. So in him, we'll have peace. Right? That's how we know we're in him. That's how we know that we're studying and we're locking in because, because these trials don't knock us out. Every trial should knock us out. Right? You get up, here's another trial. You fall, it, it knocks back over again. Right? Another trial come, you fall right back down again. Can't never stand through nothing. Come on, it's time to stand. All right? It's time to stand. All right, having all we can, right, we got to stand. And so we got the conference coming up, they're going to deal with that, right? Uh, putting this armor on, let's, let's study, let's understand how to guard ourselves, how to keep our hearts. Let's learn how to grow in Christ. Y'all yeah. understand what I'm saying tonight? Yeah. All right, so let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, all right? That rest, Christ is that rest. 
right? He is that rest. And so let's give every area of our lives to him. Let's give all the secret things to him. Let's give all the things that we, our childhood promise. Let's give it all to him. That stuff comes and trips us up. And so you get older and you get, get to trying to move and do things. And if we don't deal with childhood traumas, amen, you can't move forward. Be stagnated, all right? So give that stuff to the Lord and let him heal us. Let him strengthen us, all right? Let him love, let him love through us, all right? Yeah, some, some people, yeah, you, you, you can't forgive in your flesh. They did too much. Your flesh can't. But with the Holy Ghost, you say, God, I need you to forgive through me, all right? I need you to, God, I need you to forgive through me because I, 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 I can't do it. All right? And so the Holy Ghost works in us. God, I need you to be merciful through me because I can't show them no mercy, God, because I, I really want to throat chop them. But God, show mercy through me. All right? And so God does everything that we can't do of our own strength. He does it through us. And, that, and so that gives us the peace we need that, man, all right, all right, God, as long as you help me, I can do it. Right? And that's why we got to be in him. And, and as we do that, you find out that God will help us. And God will help us to have the kind of heart, amen, that ain't, that ain't ill will towards people. All right? God will heal our hearts. All right? He will heal our hearts. And so let God heal our hearts. Let him, let him strengthen our minds. Let him encourage us, all right, so that we can walk this thing out. This last one on here. I want, you to, I want you to write down, this is self-reflection, you don't have to share it with nobody, but you know what you struggle with. You know the areas of your life that you don't have peace, right? Some folks get nervous and they get, they get a bottle, right? Some folks get nervous and they jump in relationships. Whatever that is, you know, we all have our own things. Just self-reflect. What areas of our life do we struggle to find rest? Right? And, and this is the areas that we're going to attack. We're going to attack these areas of our lives. All right. All right, devil, you're not going to, you're not going to have the advantage over me in this area no more. I'm not going to seek, all right, seek ye first the vices. No. I'm going to seek first the kingdom. I'm going to seek him first. All right, I'm going to seek his strength first, his wisdom first, his power first, all right, and, and not the other things first. So, so look, y'all, so write those things down and let that be a part of our prayer target. All right, Hebrews 4 and 16, I'm closing here. All right, somebody read that out loud. Hebrews 4 and 16. Let us therefore come what? Boldly. Boldly, all right. Boldly. All right. Come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find, find grace, right? All right. We got to get a hold of grace. We got to find it. So you got to get in his presence. You got to study. You got to grow in understanding so we can get a hold of grace. So we can get the help in our time of need. Everybody stand to your feet. All right. Find help. God, God is here to help us. Let him help us. Let's get a hold of this rest. Let's close these doors. Amen. We got doors we need closed. All right. Amen. So that we can move forward. We can progress in our walk with the Lord. Everybody lift your hands. Lift your hands. Come on. Hallelujah. Let's make a commitment even now that we're going to spend time. We'll make a commitment to the Lord even now that we're going to spend time. Um, studying. We're going to spend time uh, self-reflection and, and learning uh, what we need to do so that we can, we can be closer to him. We can cut off, all right, access to the adversary. Let's begin to open our mouths. Let's talk to the Lord as we pray, as we pray tonight. Come on, let's open our mouths and pray. Hallelujah. God, we thank you tonight. God, we thank you for bringing us into a new season. God, as we as in the natural, we're coming into the, the fall season. But God, even in the spirit, God, but God, there's a new season coming our way. We're entering into a new season. 
God, may this season be different than the last season. God, may we grow in this season more than we've grown in the last season. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, may we get a hold of uh, more grace. God, in this season, God, may we get a hold of more wisdom in this season, more strength. Come on, let's open our mouths. Let's talk to the Lord. Hallelujah. God, you know exactly what we stand in need of, God. And, and God, we are so grateful, oh God, that you are uh, allowing us time to grow and to uh, get a hold of understanding. God, we pray right now. God, that your, uh, your will be done in each and every one of our lives, God. God, whatever assignment and whatever task that you have uh, uh, given us, hallelujah. God, we know the gifts and calling of God are without repentance, God. And so, God, help us not to take that for granted, not to take it lightly, God. But, God, to trust, God, whatever you call us to, God, we can rest in your power. We can rest in your wisdom. We can rest in your capacity to make it happen, God, because it's in you that we live and that we move and that we have our being. I wish somebody come on, would really press in. Come on. We're going to be diligent to enter into this rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we won't, we won't live un restless, God. We won't, hallelujah, be as unsettled in our spirits, God. We won't allow ourselves to be unstable. Oh, God, God, we rebuke a, a, a double-minded spirit in the name of Jesus. God, we know a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. We come against double-mindedness. God, we come into... Stability. We come into strength. We come into maturity. We come into, hallelujah, settledness. Hallelujah. God, we thank you right now. Hallelujah. Everyone that is under the sound of our voice here, on a live, on a replay, God, we speak right now, hallelujah, that the merciful hand of God be with us. Strengthen us as only you can. Deliver us. Deliver us, God. And we'll be delivered. And we'll give your name praise. And we'll honor you above all names in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's take this last 60 seconds and come on, let's pop our hands and just reflect on his goodness. Come on, let's take a, just take a moment. Let's pop our hands and and bless them. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, you're going to need this praise. You're going to need this strength this week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, you're worthy. Come on. My God. My God. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord tonight. Thank you all. Uh, now we're gonna have to we're gonna have to figure this out. We're gonna keep our Bible studies. But you know we didn't we didn't we didn't made a connection now. <laughs> I'm leaving out today. They was like, uh y'all doing a church thing today? <laughs> so we're gonna have to figure that out, y'all. Um it might have to be a, it be a little extra sacrifice, not every week, but we're going to figure it out. I told y'all we're going to have some family and friends. We're going to do some prayer meetings. But, but yeah, they miss us. But that's a good thing. So, so when we do get back, I think they'll be even more appreciative. So let's be on the lookout for that. You know, all right? Don't, don't, don't think about it as something more to do. No, we're going to rest. Come on, when we do things unto the Lord, God always blesses us, all right? And so let's look at it like that. This, this is why we're doing it. Amen. So God bless you all. Uh, thank you all for joining us here on this live stream. Uh, quick announcement. Okay. Sister Campbell needs sizes. Everyone that's going to be with us for outreach. All right. For the, for the youth, for, uh, youth conference, youth gathering. All right. September 21st, so um, whatever church sizes you need, you can text them to her, tell her now, however, all right? So don't miss out, and you don't have a shirt. <laughs> and yeah, okay. All right, God bless you.
God bless you. We gotta um, we gotta break it down.